Friday afternoons, when I would arrive at my grandfather's house after school, the tea would already be set on the kitchen table. My grandfather had his own way of serving tea. There were no teacups or saucers or bowls of granulated sugar or honey. Instead, he would pour the tea directly from the silver samovar into a drinking glass. There had to be a teaspoon in the glass first, so that the glass, being thin, might not break. My grandfather did not drink his tea in the same way that the parents of my friends did either. He would put a cube of sugar between his teeth and then drink the hot tea straight from his glass. So would I. I much preferred drinking my tea that way. After we had finished our tea, my grandfather would set two candles on the table. Then my grandfather would have a word with God in Hebrew. Sometimes he would speak out loud, but often he would close his eyes and be quiet. I knew then that he was talking to God in his heart. I would sit and wait patiently because the best part of my week was coming. When Grandpa finished talking to God, he would turn to me and say, Come, Neshumale. Then I would stand in front of him, and he would rest his hand lightly on the top of my head. He would begin by thanking God for me and for making him my grandpa. He would specifically mention my struggles during that week and tell God something about me that was true. Each week, I would wait to find out what that was. If I had made mistakes during the week, he would mention my honesty in telling the truth. If I had failed, he would appreciate how hard I had tried. If I had taken even a short nap without my nightlight, he would celebrate my bravery in sleeping in the dark. Then he would give me his blessing and ask the long ago women I knew from his many stories, Sarah and Rachel, Rebecca and Leah, to watch over me. These few moments were the only time in my week when I felt completely safe and at rest. My family of physicians and health professionals were always struggling to learn more and be more. It seemed there was always more to know and it was never enough. If I brought home 98 on a test, my father would say, and what happened to the other two points? I pursued those two points relentlessly throughout my childhood, but my grandfather did not care about such things. For him, I was already enough. And somehow when I was with him, I knew with absolute certainty that that was true. My grandfather died when I was seven years old. I had never lived in a world without him in it before, and it was hard for me. He had looked at me as no one else had and called me by that special name, Neshumale, which means beloved little soul. There was no one left to call me this anymore. At first, I was afraid that without my grandfather to see me and tell God who I was, I might disappear. But slowly over time, I came to understand that in some mysterious way, I had learned to see myself through his eyes and that once blessed, we are blessed forever. Many years later, in her extreme old age, 
my mother surprisingly began to light candles and talk to God herself. I told her about these blessings and what they had meant to me. She smiled at me sadly. I have blessed you every day of your life, Rachel. I just never had the wisdom to do it out loud.